So as you may know, if you've ever done manual product research for Amazon, uh, it takes quite a bit of time to go through each product individually to get the product data you need from that product and of course to source the product and to calculate the profit. All right, now uh, in this video what I'm going to show you is how I use to keep a product finder. Now I'm still doing manual product sourcing, so I'm still going to source these products manually using Google searches, using barcode lookups and things like that. But the difference is that uh, with this approach I'm going to get rid of product results that I don't want and I'm going to do that using a keep a product finder and what that does is it helps reduce the products down to a list of products and then I can work with that list All right so let me just show you what that looks like it makes more sense when you've seen it so um, this this is the keep a product finder which is really a filter system and what I always do is for the rank which is the first filter I put from one okay now there are a ton of filters in here and I'm not going to use most of them, right? I'm just going to use this one, this rank from one, and then I'm going to go down to the second section of this Keep a Product Finder, and I'm going to use the brand. And in this case, I'm going to use a uh, brand that I was looking at before in another video, say Everbuilt, which is a brand I got from Home Depot. And when you type in that brand name, you see it's giving you the number of products. Okay, 1,254. Now, another thing I normally do, which I don't think is going to be a major issue with Everbuilt, but I usually go down, and in this last section, there is a, another part, which is 90 days out of stock percentage for Amazon, and I put 100. And what this means is that Amazon has been out of stock of this product. They have not been selling it for the past 90 days. And in this case, it only changed by two products. It means Amazon doesn't really sell this brand, okay? So I have a lot of products there. So now I'm going to go ahead and, I could go ahead and click find products, but actually, because I have so many results, and you don't actually have to do this, but because I have so many results, you might want to use one more filter. And the filter I'm thinking of right now is in the second section. And that might be, say, the product group, right? So you can pick like a product group. Uh, for instance, I might just want to select home, all right, and see what comes up. And now I'm only getting 99 products. That helps narrow it down a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and click find products. I have just 99 products. Okay, so those are the only filters that I use. So as you see, there were a lot of filters there, and I only used about four of them. All right, so now we have just these products. So if I scroll down, okay, there are 99 products altogether. Now I can actually go ahead and I can source straight from here. And I can actually just open up products. And then I can source products. So I'm still sourcing manually, right? So Keepa um, is not a sourcing software. Okay, Keepa is a product research software and there's a difference. And again, you know, I just have to check and see if any of the products are profitable. So it's not like Keepa is going to t determine if these products are profitable. I still have to source them. But the thing is, this feels a bit more organized because I have those results pulled in. And there's a lot of data being pulled in as well. Right away, I can see the ranks. It's giving me the smallest ranks at the top. Okay, and I can see all the ranks right away and all of that. Okay, and that's basically how this works. Now, um, if you want to change the brand, you can actually just go back to advanced filter. You click on this, and when you get back here, your settings are still here. And then what you do is you go to the second part where it says brand, and you'll just change the brand. Okay, so I'm going to take out Everbuilt, and I'm going to try the Home Basics brand instead, which I had in another video. I had tried in another video as well all right I actually investigated this brand and now I have results for this brand okay now I have 2086 results but um, you know I'm just looking at the first 100 right now and you can pick the number that you want to look at at once okay um, so I could pick more if I want to do now you can source here as I said before and you can go through the products here and actually just source them here 
but the other thing you can do is you can actually download the list so what I'm going to do is actually download the list this is what I actually prefer to do and I'm going to download the product list to a CSV and when I do that um, I'm not going to suggest that you work with the CSV because the CSV is large and it's just a lot of data and the way it's organized is hard to work with but instead you're going to use an Excel system I created and I'm going to show you how well it works you just copy this data here's my filter system you come over here to the CSV part of the system and you just paste the data in here right actually the other choice is you can actually save this CSV file on your computer and inside my program I have an import CSV option and then you can select the file and import it that way but I just like to copy and paste the data straight in here instead it's really a push button system you just press filter and um, it will filter the CSV so when you go to filter what it does is it takes out the data from the CSV certain parts of the data that we need or that I th think are good uh, pieces to have and then it brings it in here okay um, I won't go through all of this right now but you can see like the number of sellers fulfilled by merchant fulfilled by Amazon um, you can see total number of sellers you can see all that different stuff in here all right the main part I'm gonna kinda of focus on here is the the end of it this is where I have like the Amazon data that you really need for sourcing which is like the rank to know you know where it ranks the ASIN obviously the title the barcodes that you can use to source the part number the model number the price and very importantly the FBA fee if you're doing FBA you need to know the FBA fee uh, for your products right and then what I actually do is I copy this and a quick way to copy this now you could highlight it down and I'm starting from the rank and I'm going over to the FBA fee okay just only copy in this part I'm gonna use control shift down and that will actually just automatically highlight that for me or you can just copy it down manually and then I copy it and what I'm going to actually do is bring that into a Google sheet okay same Google sheet uh, I used in another video and I'm actually gonna go to row 2 because I don't want to erase this and I'm just going to right click paste special paste values and what will happen is it will just paste that data so these columns are the same columns from my spreadsheet it's rank ASIN title UPC is the same thing and then um, usually the Amazon fee is 15 percent for most products but um, if you think it might be different for this category you just go here and look at the fees for a different category and see what the fees are for that category okay but most categories are 15 percent but if you're selling certain types of products home and gardens 15 percent kitchens 15 percent okay okay so you can go ahead actually I mean just kind of fill this in as 15 percent since we know most of them are 15 percent anyway okay and you can fill it in all the way to the bottom if you wish you can double click and fill that in as 15 percent now you might say well okay that was you know quite a process but you have to look at the result right um, it didn't take it doesn't take that long to just filter those products download them uh, filter them out in Excel and then copy and paste them here and what happens is that now you have a list so instead of running back and forth you can work from a list and when the product doesn't work you put a note when it does work you put a note so now with this I can immediately open the product on Amazon I have automated links so I can actually open the product on Amazon right away okay I can also Google search the product right away I have a a, a link I program to do a Google search so I can actually Google search the product right away and see some of the results okay and see if it's profitable 23.99 versus 32.99 could be it's not a huge price difference but you'd really need to have the beyond member from what I see here okay beyond plus membership right um, so basically again you're manually sourcing these products okay this is not doing sourcing for you but what it does is it makes your sourcing a little easier to do in bulk because it's providing you with an organized system right so now I have barcode lookup 
and then I can see all the different sources. So it takes the barcode, and remember this data all came from Keepa. I did not have to actually. The usefulness here is that I'm not actually sitting here typing in ASINs anymore. I'm not typing in titles, right? I'm getting this data in bulk for the whole brand, and I'm just dropping it in a Google Sheet, so that when I go to source now, I can just concentrate on sourcing and not on so much data. Okay, so this is you know a lot better um, to me. It's, it's just you know this is just faster. Okay, and again, I'm doing a video, and so I'm doing it slow because I, you know as I can do it. To explain it but imagine once you understand how to do this process you can get a lot of brands in here with a lot of products very quickly and you can very quickly um, very quickly just click through like this okay and source very quickly Google search very quickly right and you can look at the results okay see who has a, a better result um, it's still manual but what's gonna happen is when you find a result at the supplier you will just type in the supplier information like we did before and the profit is going to be calculated uh, right away as I demonstrated in the previous video you'll see the profit calculated up here uh, over here right away and so you know it's gonna say it will save you a lot of time um, in your sourcing and you know profit calculation process okay so this is pretty much process alright um, now I mean I can go through and source products but of course as you know that would take a while All right so here's one and then I can source it using barcode lookup and I can look at all the different barcode all the different uh, some different suppliers that might potentially carry this item some might be profitable some might not be of course alright so it just really all depends sometimes you get a brand where like everything is profitable for some reason alright and so you might get a real good brand uh, copy all the data for that brand and you start sourcing through these links and you find like almost every product is profitable that can happen also so it can go you know in two different directions pretty much when it comes to sourcing so um, that is pretty much how this works uh, I just wanted to show you that how you can get the product data in bulk which then enables you to do your sourcing a little bit more smoothly and the great thing is if you source a product here and it's not profitable right away you can say not profitable right or you can say no profit right and just move on and this prevents you from doing the same thing over and over you know sourcing the same product twice maybe you know or something like that and when it is profitable if I do this one and it's profitable I can put profit right and then I can put the data here the source the units and everything it will do the calculation and I'll have the profit and um, the great thing is all these FBA fees are filled in so I can see the FBA profit in my FBA section uh, right away right as I did with this product in the previous video right away I can see the FBA profit of this product is 12.6 okay and this is an exaggerated ship to Amazon cost it's usually cheaper than that so it could be more right right away I can see that but then I can also see that the FBM is not that good because if I ship it to the customer my shipping is so high compared to the FBA fee fulfilled by merchant all right so not so good fulfilled by merchant but pretty good FBA all right in this case for that product sometimes it could be the other way around too so it just really depends on the product so this is just faster um, and more organized uh, and that is really um, the idea of this of course if you want to really just source products really fast and find the profitable most profitable products you know from a supplier right away then you've got to use sourcing software for that you need you need auto sourcing all right this is not auto sourcing this is still manual sourcing okay uh, this is a filter it's not a sourcer so this is just filtering the product so if you want that then you need to get uh, you source the software like source mogul tactical arbitrage and those are powerful softwares will find your profitable products right away but they just cost a lot more um, this is under twenty dollars a month those softwares can be a hundred dollars and up over a hundred dollars a month even so there's a huge price difference um, so it just depends if this is more of a low cost solution also though to keep in mind about this uh, approach is that is the suppliers okay um, 
when I when you source manually the way I'm doing here okay when you take a barcode and you source that barcode manually okay there was another product where it had a, a list of suppliers under the barcode these are all potential suppliers that you might be able to use sourcing software may not work for certain suppliers and so it will never the sourcing software might not ever show you this particular website for instance right because they don't maybe they don't work with this site you know just as, as an example okay so um, these are all different little things to consider with the manual sourcing you can source pretty much to any supplier right but sourcing software only works with certain suppliers so there are different things to look at all right I think both methods are good it just depends on what you're doing so um, that's pretty much it I mean there are links here in the video if you're interested in that Excel system uh, if you first of all interested in Keepa okay there's a link for that you need to try Keepa try the product finder um, see if you like using it first of all uh, and then if you are okay with that then you might want to consider get in this Excel system which really filters the data out for you and by the way it also exports the data into a separate file for you as well okay so that you now you have a permanent record of all those products like these products are now permanently stored in an Excel file so I mean you know this system is um, you know it's, it's, it's a fairly uh, complex system in what it can do um, taking that data from Keepa and making it into meaningful, converting it into meaningful organized data. So um, you have that, and then of course the Google Sheet, which really just helps you to organize the sourcing process. So you might be interested, first of all, in Keepa, and then you might be interested in the Excel system and this Google Sheet. Um, if you are, see links in the video to get access to any of these tools. Some may require. Um, a small very very relative very small uh, donation really it's a purchase but it's really a donation that just kind of helps support these projects and keep it going which of course these projects that I'm doing cost uh, time and even money actually some of the technology I'm using actually um, requires me to pay for access to certain types of technology so it helps support the channel and the cost of uh, this whole project operation it helps it to keep going and uh, it helps me to keep providing you with um, content on this channel and, and my other channels as well. And um, so that's about it. Any comments, suggestions, or questions, uh, leave them below. Mr. Mark, myself for Amazon, and hope to see you in on another video.